Virgin Interactive was a British game developer and publisher, and they released 22 games for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive. And in today's video, I'm gonna take a look at all the 22 games that they published and rank them. And I've done several of these on my channel. I've actually, this is gonna be the 30th one that I've done in about a year, and I'm having a lot of fun doing these. So Virgin Interactive, they started publishing for classic computers got involved with Sega and was actually one of the bigger publishers for that console. And so uh, they had several classic games that they had published and you're gonna have your favorites. So I'm gonna go through these fairly quickly. I want you to sit back and relax and I hope you have a good one. If you're into casino games, you may wanna consider Caesar's Palace, which offers eight different casino games all in one card. I found it kind of interesting you're walking around and like nobody's at this casino. There's slots on here. I'm not a person that needs to actually put the coin in a video game slot machine, but some may like that realism. And there's blackjack on here. I found it okay. Um, this was just an average game for me and it's a C. Cannon Fodder was developed by Sensible Software. And this was a Mega Drive exclusive. We didn't get it here in the States. I really enjoy this game. I really wish we could have got it here. There's going to be many people that like this game. It's got a lot of strategy to it. Now the characters are really small, but you know, I don't think that's a big deal anymore with our TVs being so large now. This is a B. It's very difficult to stand out as a golf game. There were so many of them and Chi Chi's Pro Challenge Golf is kind of in the middle of the pack. I did like the gameplay initially. Um, you know, I was able to successfully, you know, hit several shots, but you know, when it came down to it, the accuracy is off in this game. It is very challenging, especially with putting, and this is a C for me. It was hard to stand out, especially as a platformer, but I like Chuck Rock. It was advertised everywhere. It started out as an Amiga and Atari ST game and was eventually ported over to the Sega Genesis. Lots of humor in here, really nice graphics and sound. It's a B for me. Chuck Rock was followed up by Chuck Rock 2, the son of Chuck. And I like this game. I think I like the premise of the first one a little bit better, uh, but I think this is a solid follow-up and I think many are gonna like the better graphics. The gameplay is a little bit faster as well. I did enjoy that. Another above average platform for the Sega Genesis and a B. When you think of like product tie-ins, you think of games that were below average. Cool Spot is not one of those. An amazing platformer, amazing graphics, gameplay. Uh, I, I love Cool Spot, you know. An example of product placement done right. And I love the bonus levels. There was a ton of thought and imagination in this game. It's wonderful, it's an A for me. CyberCop is a game I've tried over and over again to get into. It's called Corporation, I do believe, for the Mega Drive. And this is a first-person RPG. There's a lot to this game, but I did not like the slow frame rate, the really boring level design. The enemies are, are definitely more spruced up, but I don't like this game. I think the gameplay falls flat. This is an F. Here's the rankings through the first seven. Next one is another one we didn't get here in the States, and that's Dino Dini's Soccer. And this is a very competent soccer game. I did like it, enjoyed it. Uh, it's, it's, I do believe, an adaptation of Goal for the Mega Drive. And this was on classic computers as well, uh, as such as the Amiga. But I like this game. I think it's a fun soccer game. It doesn't take itself too seriously. There's like two different perspectives. There's like a zoomed out one, and then it zooms in when you do the gameplay. Uh, the ball control is a little so-so. Um, I do believe the Super Nintendo changed the, the gameplay in that aspect a little bit. This is a B. There's so much to love about the computer adaptation of Dune Battle for Arrakis for the Sega Genesis. Three different factions. If you're a Dune fan, you're gonna love this. This is the granddaddy real-time strategy game of them all. An example of an RTS working on a console, uh, everything from building to battling to exploring, 
This has many elements that you are gonna love. If you haven't checked this out, this is a must play and it's an A. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. oh boy. This is Jam It, and this is one of the worst basketball games for the Sega Genesis. Stereotypical urban basketball game, doesn't work for me, one-on-one. -on -one. I didn't like it, thought it was boring. Terrible music, and I'd rather play several other basketball games. Avoid, this is an F. Snooker is a Q sport I'm not too familiar with, but there was a game based on it, and it's Jimmy White's Whirlwind Snooker. And this was a Mega Drive game we didn't get here. Uh, really good graphics. Um, that's the best thing about this game. I would rather personally play a traditional pool game as I have more experience with the rules of that. But if you're looking for a snooker game, this is something you may enjoy. It's a C for me. This next one is a fan favorite of some and it's Mick and Mac as the Global Gladiators. This is a wonderful platformer yet again an example of product placement done right. Really good music and fast gameplay. It's a little short, there's 12 levels. If I had a choice between this and Cool Spot, I'm gonna choose Cool Spot over this, but this is a solid B. Muhammad Ali, considered one of the greatest boxers of all time. Got his own boxing game for the Sega Genesis and this disappoints on all levels. I don't like the perspective. I don't think the graphics are great. The sound effects are lame. I would rather choose several other boxing games other than this one. A total disappointment. It's a D for me. Avoid this, play something better. There are a few games that blew my mind back in the day and out of this world, known as another world in other regions, truly had an impact. This is a wonderful and amazing game. If you're a big fan of Flashback, you're gonna love this game. I like this game better. I also had a lot more experience with this game. I know it was on several platforms, but I played a lot of the Sega Genesis one, and it is truly astonishing. Now, you're gonna die quite a bit. There's a lot of trial and error, and if you're easily frustrated, this is not a game for you. However, I kept coming back to this game over and over and over again, trial and error, trying to figure out puzzles, trying to figure out how to get past a certain part. Absolutely love this game. This is a must play for the Sega Genesis and a total S for me. And here's the ranking of the first 14 games. There was endless crossovers in the 90s and Robocop versus Terminator makes an awesome video game. I was a big fan of Robocop arcade game and this kind of has the feel and look of that. It is important to note that this game is extremely violent. And while the story is kind of so-so, I really think they did a good job making a competent video game. Uh, if you're a fan of Robocop Terminator, this is a must play and I highly recommend it. It's an A for me. While Aladdin gets the spotlight for being the best Disney platformer probably on the Sega Genesis, the Jungle Book was a solid attempt now, Sega published Aladdin, but Virgin Interactive published The Jungle Book for Sega Genesis. And I like this game. I don't like it as much as Lion King or Aladdin, but I do think it is a solid action platformer with lots to collect and great animation. It's a B. Classic Disney movie, as well as an awesome video game, The Lion King to me was found everywhere back in the day. If you found a lot of Sega Genesis games, you definitely found Lion King in the mix. Why? Because it's an amazing action platformer. Now it's a little bit challenging, I would say for kids, especially that first level, there's some jumping sequences that might be challenging, but if you can get past that, you can take several hits. I recommend playing this. One of the best on the Sega Genesis, it's an A. The next game is an example of playing a different version first and then going back and playing the Sega Genesis Kart version. I played the Sega CD version, one of my favorite Sega CD games of all time. Rock and soundtrack, additional levels, and the Genesis Kart one is just okay. This version lacks the polish and refinement of the Sega CD version and it's just a C. Ah, Two Tribes, Populous 2. You know, I played Populous 2 on the Amiga, I do believe, and playing the Genesis port, which we didn't get here in the States, it's actually a Mega Drive game. 
I was really frustrated with using the control pad navigating the menus in this game. Now I know that there's several people that love this game. I don't have a problem with the game itself. There is some slowdown in this port. I recommend playing the Amiga version if you're going to play a version of Populous 2. That's my opinion. It's a C for me. Another excellent game often overlooked is Tyrants, what it was called in the United States. And this is a wonderful RTS game. Now, you have to navigate kind of a clunky menu, but there's so much to love in this game. As you go through time, there's 10 different tech levels as you build and evolve your army. It can be excruciatingly frustrating at the end of this game. It's well worth it. It's an A for me. I have a lot of happy memories as a kid playing this. The problem with World Trophy Soccer is that there was just other better soccer games on the market. I don't think it's a bad game, but I felt the gameplay was a little slow. The perspective was just okay. I mean, it has kind of your, your generic and typical options that any other soccer game was giving. While not terrible, it is below average for me, and it's a D. Another Amiga port, and that's Xenon 2 Mega Blast. And, you know, this is another game and another example where sometimes a computer port does not successfully transfer over to a home console. This one just does not do it for me. It's slow. It's missing the final level from the computer port. Even with this game's cool feature of actually going backwards in the vertical level, uh, it doesn't save this from being below average. Play the Amiga version of this game. Avoid this port. This is a D. That is all 22 games that they published. Now, they did other games, but those were published by other companies. What are your favorites? What did you think of my ratings? I'm sure you may have different opinions. That's okay. Be positive and comment below what you would rate some of these. Thank you so much for the ongoing support. If you like what you see, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and click the bell as I upload new videos every week, as well as if you wanna rank these yourself, there's gonna be a link below and just wanna say thank you so much for just tuning in on my channel. You folks are wonderful and beautiful. This is the immortal John Hancock and you have a great day.